Hey guys, I'm John King, hanging out here with my good friend, and we are about to have the most amazing interview of all time. Whoa, okay, and I gotta live up to that now. Yeah, now you gotta, <laughs> you better kill it now. <laughs> Your debut single, where the way in which you were introduced to country music was Tonight Tonight. Yeah. What was the the reaction you got out on the road? Because obviously radio liked it. It, uh, it did well. Right. What was the reaction you got from people? You know, what it's has that song done for you? it's crazy. It's uh, it, it everybody knows it everywhere we go, every place we play it now, everybody sings it, and I, it's one of those songs that you don't even know, even if they've never heard it. It's just easy to learn, and it's like by the second chorus, I think everybody just knows it and feels like they should sing along, and that's really the reason I cut the song. It just has this anthem, <laughs> this anthemic quality to it that I love, and um, I, I just love the message. Tonight's going to be the best night of our lives. It's simple, it's fun, and it it's, can be applied to any situation, so that's why, that's why I fell in love with it. And I think it's a it's a good message because ultimately, not to you know get too zen, but all we really have is this moment. Exactly. You know, we always have the the right now is what right. we have. Yeah, and it's it's all about taking advantage of every every second. And when I'm at a show and I'm playing for you know a, a screaming crowd and they're having a blast, like I want them to have the best night of their lives. So what better message to deliver on stage than that very thing in front of them in that moment? You know. And giving them permission yeah. to have that great It's time. okay. Yeah, <laughs> just let go. <laughs> the new song you will be debuting is On Your Lips, which is one yeah. that you did co-write. Cool, right. Um, so very first of all, talk about the write, the idea, the spark that made that song come to life. Well, I, you know, I, I wrote a song. I, I had this idea. I wanted to write a pickup line song because there's so many cheesy pickup lines out there, you know. So I feel like I would just add to the pile of cheesy pickup <laughs> lines. <laughs> so I had, a, um, I had this idea and... Um, I actually tested it out on my wife, like right after we wrote it, because I, I was like, "You gotta, you gotta straight up tell me." I was like, "You gotta tell me if this would work," because you know she's a girl, and I, you know she's had pickup lines used on her. I've used a few on her, so I was like, "If we weren't married, would this work?" And the whole idea is a guy walks up to a girl in a bar or wherever, and they're having a conversation, and she uh, says something like, "What do you do?" or "What do you want to be?" And he just looks her deep into the eyes and says, "Baby, the only thing I want to be." is the next thing on your lips and I was like I think it could work and Hannah was like my wife she said yeah it would work so I was like okay I yeah. think we got something so it's just one of those it's playful it's tongue-in-cheek and uh, it's but it's also got this kind of sexy thing about it that I, I think is cool yeah yeah yeah. And now I'm, I'm imagining that scene in the bar. <laughs> That's a really cool thing to say, but you have to be careful when, probably. Like it's you exactly. You said too early in the conversation. That's what I always preface that with, is don't walk straight up to a girl and say that, because you're going to get slapped. <laughs> You need to have you need to have a little bit of background first, you know. Wait for your moment. Have some rapport. Yes. Not only that. Exactly. You're from Georgia. Yes, ma'am. What is in the water down there? <laughs> That's the best question I've ever heard in my life. That makes people. She is killing this interview. I love it. There's all this. I just spoke with Daniel Lee. Uh, yeah. He's one of, you know, he's just wonderful, and and there's so many. I can I can fill the rest of this interview just listing people who from yeah. Georgia who who end up writing really great stuff. You know, that was the first first question my producer Doug Johnson asked me when I came to Nashville we were riding I walked in the ride room and he said where are you from I said I'm from Georgia he says God another Georgia boy he said that's just what we need on country radio is another Georgia boy and he said I guess there's just something in the water down there and we actually wrote a song called something in the water before before the Carrie Underwood song and it was the title track of my first DP and it's about that same thing and the answer I always give is I think it's just we don't have anything better to do it's uh, where I grew up there was nothing music was all we had and you just get in there and you grind it out and you write songs and you play music and you know the standards are high too because there's so much talent in Georgia you kind of rise to the occasion you know when I was coming through middle school and high school Luke Bryan and Al Dean were, were playing uh, the Georgia Theater in, in uh, Athens so if you're going to make noise down there you got to really step up and and you got to do it right yeah and that's I think that's an interesting point and I've brought that up with artists from Texas before yeah. especially songwriters from Texas um, where you think if you're going to go around saying that I'm a songwriter from Texas well you're in competition with Willie Nelson good luck <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
it's and it gives you something to strive for too. Yeah. So yes, you're calling it. You have to step up to the plate. But is that a good thing too? Very good. Yeah. I mean, I think any time that you're pressed to to be better, you know, and you have pressure around you, like in Nashville, you come here and you get better because there's so much talent around you, and you just rise to the occasion. And um, I mean, I'm a really competitive person, so I, I always want to get better and be better, and I'm always looking for ways to improve. So I think it's a good thing. I think that's definitely one of the reasons that there's so much talent coming out of there. Yep. One of the things that was mentioned to me prior is you kept a lot of your own, um, a lot of things in house. You were doing your own booking. You were yeah. doing all that stuff on, by yourself. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the the fun that booking is as an independent artist. Yeah. It, it was. I mean, it, it wasn't very fun. It was a lot of work. Um, and, and you know, I'm really thankful to have a, a label now that that helps me with that. But before I had a deal, you know, I went to the University of Georgia and studied music business, and, and I was a marketing major. So I had a little bit of background, you know, knowledge about how the business the side of it worked and um, yeah I mean I knew nobody was going to give me anything I knew I was going to have to scrape tooth and nail and, and just, just do the best I can with what I had so we started building a little grassroots following just by picking up the phone calling clubs doing 200 dates a year on the road and just building our fan base the old fashioned way you know just by getting out there on the road and doing it and uh, it was great you know looking back now it molded us to where now we know how to play so many different rooms because we've done so many shows it's just it comes natural to us and we're comfortable and um, you know also it's it's to me is really important and, and great to know the business side of it at least somewhat and how it works and I think every artist should at least know what's going on obviously we want to focus on the artistry you want to focus on the songs and being a better artist but to have a grasp of what's going on I think can really help you yeah it's something I work with songwriters and new artists myself and I think it's really important to keep that stuff to yourself as long as possible yeah because it means once you're big enough that you need other people to do that for you yeah you know exactly what it is that they're supposed to do yeah you'll know when they're not doing it right yeah exactly and, and it's just a it's just a good thing um, and, and I think it's also the people that you have working for you are appreciative when you when you know how hard they're working and you know what goes into it and you can give thanks and say hey I know who you're working hard because I know how hard it really is and yep. so it, it just gives you that, that deeper level of connection with the people you're surrounded with. Another thing that I think it gives you as an artist is a confidence. Yeah. That Because this business is so uncertain and you know this. For sure. Um, companies come and go, record deals come and go. Yep. Should a, the unthinkable happen? you know you can go back to doing it on your own. <laughs> and I well, think it gives you a confidence that you know, whatever, come with me, I'm going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it, is, it is nice to know that, you know, you can always fall back on, on your things like that. But um, it's also good to know that you have a, a team surrounding you that you believe in, you know, and, and we do right now. It's, it's just going great, and I'm really excited about this next year and, and what's coming. You're coming across as really centered. Um, very, I'm grounded in, like you mentioned, your wife. Like you're, you yeah. have a, a grounding. Yeah. Um, how do you view that? in your life where does that centeredness come from yeah, i mean obviously you you hit it right on the head i mean family is a is a huge part of what i am i mean i'm a i'm a normal guy i love my family i, I love making music and um i love people man like my favorite part about this job is getting out there with the fans and hugging their necks and shaking their hands and letting them know how much i appreciate them and same with the radio people and the people have always been my favorite part of this job and the music it, it's if you got good songs and there aren't people that want to hear them then it's you're singing to nothing you know you're, you're doing nothing so without those fans without the radio people and your label support and your family it's all for nothing so I, I love that this business incorporates um, people and and I get to get out there and see them and meet new ones every day and and go all over parts of the world that I wouldn't normally get to do I've often said we call it the music business, but really it's the people business. You're exactly right. <laughs> you're exactly right. You're, you're in the people business. Yes. Um, and it's both the business people and yeah. the audience. Do you see a... I'm trying to find a, the best way to say this. So the way that the real the realism of the business, which there is. There is a reality. There is a certain path 
or a certain expectation within the business and yeah. there's a certain expectation from an audience how yeah. do you walk that line between staying who you are yeah while still understanding that their industry expects certain things from you yeah i mean i think it's important you you want to be an artist and you want to be true to yourself but at the same time you have to deliver you have to deliver stuff that you know that the people and and the masses are going to want and you have to you have to ride that line i mean guys who are great at it like eric church and aldine and i think those are some good examples of guys who have brought their own style to country music but have still stayed true to who they are and what they do and um i mean i think it's all just about having confidence in yourself and what you're doing and trusting the people around you to to tell you hey you know you're you're doing you know this is what you're doing you're staying on the course and when you stray a little bit which we do i mean we're artists it's it's never a science you know you don't know exactly what's going to happen they pull you back and they keep you they keep you riding that line like you said and um luckily for me i feel like i have the perfect um you know the the base around me to keep me centered enough yeah the degree you have so it's music business and marketing yeah are there any careers that you look at of people who've been in the business for a long time that you almost use as study material where you're not copying their career but right. you're thinking and you've already mentioned Jason Aldean, who I think has been very, very smart about his right. career. Eric Church, same thing. Yeah. Kenny Chesney. Yes. Um, these people. Do you ever look? Are there any people's careers that you look at and you go, they've managed to keep that balance between who they are and what they're doing and how to get successful so let me go and crack that code so i can do it too. I, to me in like every interview that anybody ever sees from me knows that i always mention this guy but garth to me is the guy who cracked the code like he is the perfect example of a guy who is an artist he's true to himself um he does what he does but at the same time he knows how to deliver it to the masses he's a marketing genius but it's not fake it's so real like everything he does it just it comes across as being so true and most of all what i really love about him other than his energy on stage and obviously he's an amazing entertainer and singer and songwriter he loves the people he loves his fans and he treats his fans as good or better than anybody else out there and that's why he can go, come out 20 years later and sell out city after city you know because he's he's garth and, and do it again and do it again and again and he always will be able to because people love him so that's the formula it's it's getting people to connect with you on a level that um that makes them love you and want to come out and see a show and making them feel like they're part of something that last point i think that's really important making the people feel involved yeah um so they have a stake in the music how do you try to cultivate that like social media do you chat with your like you already yes. said like you make sure that you have time after a show to hang out with people hear their stories yes what other things do you actively actively do that you on purpose consciously want to keep doing as long as possible well we um you know we obviously do you know all the social media i do that on my own i, I handle it on my own and i try to keep that personal as possible because as of right now i can i can still do that i mean i can yeah. i have it, it's time consuming but it's totally worth it to grow fans that are going to be lifelong fans and they're going to be there from the ground up that's what i need right now that's the, the people i need you know on my side another thing we started doing that's kind of cool and it's a little unconventional um i got a phone I, I i got a separate phone that i just use for my fans i use it it's my phone and i give my number out on stage i give my cell phone number out on stage and i have all the fans text me shoot me a text during the show after the show and I text regularly every day with my fans and it's just a step closer you know there's the social media and then there's this and this is like as close as it can get without like having one-on-one on one, on right one-on-one yeah. on one interaction personally yeah. and it's been so great I mean the fans have responded so amazingly to it and I just think it's it's one of those things that uh, they don't you that's not something you would normally see you know no absolutely you know if, and if I'm a fan of someone and, and, and I, I flip the you know the tables and say if I loved an artist if they were to shoot me a text message and like it was really them and it was something genuine hey thanks for coming out the show tonight would love to see you again you know what was your favorite part of the show hope you had a good time whatever little things like that make would make a difference to me what a great yeah idea. so we do yeah. that and it, you know it's it's one of those things that i want to be able to do as long as i can because it's just it's a way to grow closer yeah and and again like we were saying especially because it keeps coming back you keep coming back to a sense of real 
yeah a sense of something authentic yes exactly and you know and i think it's i go back to garth i mean it's it's always been authentic with him everything he does comes across as being true and it is i mean he really wants to know about his fans and i really want to know about my fans i want to know who they are and i want to know you know what they love about the music and, and why they gravitate towards it because it's you know without them we're nothing you know yeah yeah you're like i said you're playing to an empty bar yeah exactly they're not there I've been finishing up with this question, which has been um, soliciting some interesting responses. Which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life? Oh my gosh, wow. Hmm. Well, you know. Garth Brooks. Yeah, I would probably have a Garth <laughs> song on there. Um, a song that, that really uh, kind of piqued my interest when I was a kid, and, and I always go back to this song because it, to me, it's the perfect cross between like southern rock and country which are the two worlds that i love so much and it kind of blended them for me and i remember hearing it and it just it just caught my attention at a young age it was dust in the bottle by david lee murphy oh, wow. and it's one of those songs that's just so timeless and i cover it still i you know we we play it almost every night and i will never ever get tired of that song i can hear it and it's you know it doesn't matter where you're at what city everybody always knows it and you can bank on that they'll be singing along to that song so that would be on there um tonight tonight would be on there because it's my first song you know it's always going to be have a piece of my heart and um it's going to be one of those songs that always stays close to me um and you know, I mean, there's so many good songs. I'm a huge Almond Brothers fan. Uh, Ramblin' Man was one of the cool songs that that me and my dad used to listen to. You know, on Friday nights when we were sitting down listening to records. Skinner. I mean, I just was across the road in in the rhyme and listened to Vince Gill do Whenever You Come Around. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's one of those songs that just sends great. chills yeah. up and down. So th- there's just this town's full of just millions of great songs, and it's um it's just an honor to be here. You know, in in this absorbed in this and be a part of it. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.